Hi everyone. Naval artillery in the Age of Sail encompasses the period of roughly 1571 to 1862, when large, sail-powered wooden naval warships dominated the high seas, mounting a large variety of types and sizes of cannon as their main armament. By modern standards, these cannon were extremely inefficient, difficult to load, and short-ranged. These characteristics, along with the handling and seamanship of the ships that mounted them, defined the environment in which the naval tactics in the Age of Sail developed. A complete and accurate listing of the types of naval guns requires analysis both by nation and by time period. The types used by different nations at the same time often were very different, even if they were labeled similarly. The 16th century was an era of transition in naval warfare. Since ancient times, war at sea had been fought much like that on land, with melee weapons and bows and arrows, but on floating wooden platforms rather than battlefields. Though the introduction of guns was a significant change, it only slowly changed the dynamics of ship-to-ship -ship combat. As guns became heavier and able to take more powerful gunpowder charges, they needed to be placed lower in the ship, closer to the water line. Although some 16th century galleys mounted broadside cannon, they did so at the expense of rowing positions which sacrificed speed and mobility. Most early cannon were still placed in the forecastle and aftercastle of a ship where they might be conveniently pointed in any direction. Early naval artillery was an anti-personnel weapon to deter boarders. Throughout the century, naval artillery was the single greatest advantage the Portuguese held over their rivals in the Indian Ocean, and the Portuguese crown spared no expense in procuring and producing the best naval guns European technology permitted. Being a crown industry, cost considerations did not curb the pursuit of the best quality, best innovations and best training. The crown paid wage premiums and bonuses to lure best European artisans and gunners to advance the industry in Portugal. Every cutting-edge innovation introduced elsewhere was immediately appropriated into Portuguese naval artillery, that includes bronze cannon, breech-loading swivel guns, truck carriages, and the idea of cutting square gun ports in the hull to allow heavy cannon to be mounted below deck. In this respect, the Portuguese spearheaded the evolution of modern naval warfare, moving away from the medieval warship, a carrier of armed men, aiming for the grapple, towards the modern idea of a floating artillery piece dedicated to resolving battles by gunnery alone. The types used by a given nation would shift greatly over time, as technology and tactics. Some types include Demi Cannon The Demi Cannon was a medium-sized cannon, similar to but slightly larger than a culverin and smaller than a regular 42 pounds cannon, developed in the early 17th century. A full cannon fired a 42 pound shot, but these were discontinued in the 18th century as they were seen as too unwieldy. The lower tiers of 18th century English warships were usually equipped with demi cannons. Ships featuring demi cannons included HMS Sovereign of the Seas, HMS Resolution, and HMS James, which fought in the Anglo Dutch naval wars. The barrels of demi cannon were typically 11 feet long had a caliber of 6 inches and could weigh up to 5,600 pounds it required 18 pounds of black powder to fire a 32 pounds round shot. The Demi cannon had an effective range of 1,600 feet, 490 meters. These 32 pounders were used during the 18th century on first-rate three-decker ships of the line which carried up to 100 guns. Though powerful, the naval demi cannons were inaccurate except at close range, so opposing warships would try to get as close as possible before firing their broadside in order to cause as much damage as possible. Sometimes a single broadside was enough to cripple the enemy vessel. Naval artillery and tactics stayed relatively constant during the period 1571 to 1862 with large, sail-powered wooden naval warships mounting a great variety of different types and sizes of cannon as their main armament. By the 1650s, 
The line of battle had developed as a tactic that could take advantage of the broadside armament. This method became the heart of naval warfare during the Age of Sail, with navies adapting their strategies and tactics in order to get the most broadside on fire. Cannon were mounted on multiple decks to maximize broadside effectiveness. Numbers and caliber differed somewhat with preferred tactics. France and Spain attempted to immobilize ships by destroying rigging with long range, accurate fire from their swifter and more maneuverable ships, while England and the Dutch Republic favored rapid fire at close range to shatter a ship's hull and disable its crew. Carronade A carronade is a short, smooth bore, cast iron cannon which was used by the Royal Navy. It was first produced by the Caron Company, an ironworks in Falkirk, Scotland, and was used from the mid-18th century to the mid-19th century. Its main function was to serve as a powerful, short-range, anti-ship and anti-crew weapon. The technology behind the carronade was greater dimensional precision, with the shot fitting more closely in the barrel thus transmitting more of the propellant charge's energy to the projectile allowing a lighter gun using less gunpowder to be effective. The carronade was designed as a short-range naval weapon with a low muzzle velocity for merchant ships, but it also found a niche role on warships. It was produced by the Caron Iron Works and was at first sold as a system with the gun, mounting, and shot all together. Carronades initially became popular on British merchant ships during the American Revolutionary War. A lightweight gun that needed only a small gun crew and was devastating at short range was well suited to defending merchant ships against French and American privateers. The Royal Navy was initially reluctant to adopt the guns, mainly due to mistrust of the Caron Company, which had developed a reputation for incompetence and commercial sharp dealing. Carronades were not even counted in numbering the guns of a ship. Lord Sandwich eventually started mounting them in place of the light guns on the forecastle and quarterdeck of ships. They soon proved their effectiveness in battle. French gun foundries were unable to produce equivalents for 20 years, so carronades gave British warships a significant tactical advantage during the latter part of the 18th century, though French ships mounted another type of weapon in the same role, the Obizia de Vaso. HMS Victory used the two 68-pounder carronades which she carried on her forecastle to great effect at the Battle of Trafalgar, clearing the gun deck of the Bucentaur by firing a round shot and a keg of 500 musket balls through the Bucentaur's stern windows. The carronade was initially very successful and widely adopted, and a few experimental ships were fitted with a carronade-only armament, such as HMS Glatton and HMS Rainbow. Glatton, a fourth-rate ship with 56 guns, had a more destructive broadside at short range than HMS Victory, a first-rate ship with 100 guns. Glatton and Rainbow were both successful in battle, though the carronade's lack of range was an arguable tactical disadvantage of this arrangement against an opponent who could keep out of carronade range, but within the range of his long guns. In the 1810s and 1820s, tactics started to place a greater emphasis on the accuracy of long-range gunfire, and less on the weight of a broadside. Indeed, Captain David Porter of USS Essex complained when the Navy replaced his 12-pounder long guns with 32-pounder carronades. The carronade disappeared from the Royal Navy from the 1850s after the development of improved methods for building cannon by William George Armstrong and Joseph Whitworth. Carronades were nevertheless still used in the American Civil War in the 1860s. Thanks for watching.